changer. Hi, and welcome to my presentation about WiMAX. WiMAX operates on the same general principles as Wi-Fi. It sends data from one computer to another via radio signals. Now, architecturally and technologically, there's really no difference between WiMAX and Wi-Fi. If Wi-Fi 10 years ago, we have very few access points, okay? WiMAX 10 years down the road or 15 years down the road, we can have a lot of them. Okay? It now depends on the regulatory authority whether they would allow, okay? Both telcos, ISPs, uh, media conglomerates, or even uh, communities themselves to have their own WiMAX radios and WiMAX distribution network. So that's a policy issue. What I'm saying here is if before a, wi a Wi-Fi access point was a couple of thousand dollars 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and now you can buy one for 30, 40 dollars, the same thing can happen to WiMAX. So you will have the situation really where you have a lot of wireless connectivity available. So that changes the paradigm, your business model and your revenue model as well as your uh, services that you uh, offer to the population, to your clientele. And there are instances already like in, in Canada where the electric uh, utility also decided to become an ISP, a wireless ISP. I don't know what 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 the direction and what the uh, considerations are in Bhutan, but because let's say electricity is like it's a it's a very stable business. Yeah. Okay. But uh, if you look at the long term, you might want to say, okay, what if uh, electricity was bundled with something else? wireless connectivity, web services, and things like that. So that's that's on the horizon. In the next 10 years, you will be grappling with that issue whether uh, wireless, especially wide maps, would be offered by a telco, the electric authority, the electric utility, or some private entity altogether. Okay. Just, if you have any questions, <laughs> So, WiMAX iPhones are out in the States already this year. Okay? Talking of high speed wireless, and if you're able to deliver at least 1.2 megabits to a device, you're already saying that you can transmit video. Okay, here in the Philippines, DSL, residential, it's almost 1 megabit 700, 500, we're not yet there. So video over the copper lines here, okay, is still maybe two years down the road. But uh, for the wireless, okay, uh, because of this phenomenon of 3G and things like that, uh, one megabit, okay, or consumers will experience one megabit connectivity faster on the or sooner on the wireless side than on the wired side, okay. So it's now, a, it's now a chicken or egg thing. Will the WiMAX phones uh, sell if there is not enough demand? Okay, or does there have to be content first? Or does there have to be the pipes first before the content before the phone? So we don't know. We don't know which will come first, but we know they'll come in a 
cluster, basically. They have, it's like a, it's a cyclical loop that you have to, to be able to achieve. Is uh, Wi-Mix available only in iPhones? Or, or is there any other, any other phones? By no, uh, iPhone is up to 3G now. So WiMAX are the Motorola's and the other, uh, uh, there's a race. Okay, so Motorola, I think, and uh, Samsung are up. Because remember, uh, Korea is the, the broadband, the wireless broadband capital of the planet. So the Korean brands are ahead in terms of uh, WiMAX. Okay. Right now, we don't uh, we use this. 3GH HSDK? Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, GPRS. Okay. Which is, uh, GPRS is, is very low, so yeah, that's good for text, it's yes. not good for, for video yet. Okay. <clears throat> now, the game changer really when, when it comes to white Max is when uh, have you seen the Apple iPad PAD? Uh, the 10 inch tablet? I have seen it in television. Yeah. But not in real. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's really fantastic. And if they have the WiMAX version, I think they announced. So the 3G version is up, but the WiMAX version okay, has been is still you know, for release. So when they have that, that's when you really take advantage of a device that has 10, 12 hours of battery life, yeah. unlike your laptop. Okay. And it's so mobile and portable. Yeah. And you have a good enough size of a uh, screen with high resolution that even in outdoor lighting you know has good uh, visibility because the problem with laptops is you know number one battery two three hours you're dead yeah. you bring it outside you know sunlight you can you can see the screen okay so uh, the, the the apple ipad device is a whole different or new animal uh, altogether which is very difficult to compare with uh, with a laptop. And it's, it's, it's really like a game changer as far as I'm concerned. Okay? So we know there's WiMAX that's a given. The, y, the WiMAX phones will come in the next one or two years. Have you seen wearable computers? Wearable computers. Computers that you wear. Yes. Like on your wrist, maybe on your neck, maybe. Okay, so let, let me show you a, a sample. I've been intrigued by this question of whether we could evolve or develop a sixth sense. A sense. Are you familiar with TED Talks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, but have you seen this particular video? Uh, I haven't seen the. The lectures given by this lady. Uh, okay. I have seen the the one uh, uh, given by one uh, Indian. Pranav Mishri. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, this is the mentor of Pranav. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have seen that. The same thing. That would give us seamless fish. So if you the course of the year, you don't shake somebody's hand this and then say. Can you hold on for a while while I take out my yes. phone and Google you? Or uh, when you go to the supermarket and you're standing there in that huge aisle of different types of toilet papers, you don't take out your cell phone and open a browser and go to a website to try to decide which of these uh, different toilet papers is the most ecologically responsible purchase to make. So we don't really have easy access to all this relevant information that can just help us make optimal decisions on to start and to their action system uh, with a little mirror. These components communicate to my cell phone in my pocket, which acts as the uh, communication and computation device. And in the video here, we see my student Pranav Mystery, who's yeah. really the genius who's been implementing and designing this whole system. And we see how this system lets him walk up to any surface and start using his hands to interact with the information that is projected in front of him 
the system tracks the four significant fingers. In this case, he's wearing simple marker caps that you may recognize. But if you want a more stylish version, uh, you could also paint your nails in different colors. And uh, the camera basically tracks. Are you familiar with Nicolas Negor Ponte? Uh, the guy who developed the hundred dollar laptop. Yes. Okay. Oh, hey, Negro Ponte has this has this idea. Uh, I don't have his this particular video with me right now, but, but it's but the idea is uh, slightly different from this. Yeah, but uh, what I'm saying is, Negro Ponte has this idea. He's saying every surface a display. So this is the beginning of yeah. every surface a display. So you don't need even that iPod monitor, you know, as a monitor, every surface will be a display eventually. And then uh, have you seen the, the video of uh, the Siftables in 10 Talks? Yes. The, the chips yes. that you can rearrange? Okay. So that's another way of like saying, you know, Building interactivity into into learning because it's it's very fun for the kids to you know, be playing with blocks and reassembling and resorting etc etc. Okay, so you you seem to be uh, very you know uh, abreast with all the not much not you, much. You spend a lot of time watching videos or uh, how do you identify or how do you keep up? Uh, these are just by virtue of having friends across the globe and then the, whenever my friends they find this interesting stuff, they just forward to me and just happen to see this. Not because I'm so enthusiastic of you know, yeah, I'm watching all these YouTube yeah. So okay, so that means number one, you have a social network. Yes. And number two, your social network is working as your collaborative yeah. filter. Yeah. Because you see, I mean, all of us, we don't have enough time to pay all of yeah, yeah, yeah. So the more important thing is to, to have others yeah. who think the same way or have the same interest or the same passion and start sharing. Yes. Okay? So that you can now build your knowledge assets. Okay? Now, for the, for the electric authority, what, what the implications of this thing is like, uh, number one, you have a lot of devices that you will have to be charging okay, through your uh, electric uh, distribution network. So it's not just the refrigerator and the air conditioner, air, air conditioner anymore. Okay? And there's another video in TED Talks, I don't know if you've seen that, uh, wireless electricity. Uh, I haven't seen that. Okay, so wireless electricity, that's already possible today. So if you go to TED Talks at TED.com, uh, look for Eric Giles, E R I C J I L E S. Yeah. Okay, J I L E S. Is it uh, something related uh, to mobile chargers? When you travel, you can charge your mobile you know, yes. without having the yes. source of electricity. <clears throat> well, they don't have the, the, the production device yes. mobile enough yet. Yeah. So right now, it's going to do wireless to let's say, an LCD TV, so you don't have any wires. Oh. So your unit is here, and your, your plasma is here, oh. but there's no wire. Yeah, yeah. So this can charge your cell phone, your console, your TV, but it's not big enough, it's not small enough yet to be mobile. But it'll get there. Yeah, you see? Which one? Uh, so look for uh, wireless electricity. The TED Talks is uh, Eric Giles, E R I C Giles, G I L E S. So it, it's, it's, it's some sort of what do you call this? Frame. So you pass your Cell phone, I guess there's a field that you know concentrates the electricity and then it will charge.